morning. It's great to see you. Thanks for joining us. This morning, we've got a really exciting global gathering lined up for you. We're going to be hearing about a local church that's chosen to join Oasis. And then later, Jill Rowe, Oasis National Head of Ethos and Values, will explain to us why pass the parcel is more than just a way of passing the time for parents wondering what to do to entertain their young guests at their child's birthday party. But before all of that, for those of you who are new to the Oasis Global Gathering, my name is Steve Chalk. I'm one of the ministers of Oasis Church Waterloo and I'm also the founder of Oasis, which is a charity that works across England as well as a number of other countries around the world to build communities where everyone is included. To build communities where everyone can make a contribution. Communities where everyone is supported to thrive and to reach their God-given potential. Now we do this in a host of practical ways, from providing supported housing, to run in primary and secondary schools, from delivering an array of healthcare projects to working hard to create justice for young people at risk of exploitation, exclusion, and even of criminalization. And of course, on top of that, much, much more besides, including a small group of really inclusive churches. And so at the heart, of all our work sits our badge, which is the O of Oasis. We call it our circle of inclusion. It's based on the belief that we are all, every single one of us, made in the image of the God of love. That we are loved. That we are infinitely valuable. That each one of us is counted in. That every one of us shares in the privilege of being God's chosen representatives. So before we rush on, I invite you to pause, just for a moment, to stop in your busyness, to relax, to breathe. Breathe in and breathe out and to reflect on that extraordinarily wonderful fact. You, you are made in the image of the God who is love. Now, Anne Danerol is the leader of Whole Community Church, who've just chosen to become part of Oasis' small, as I said, but growing group of inclusive churches. And for this week's Connect, Nathan Jones caught up with Anne to find out more. Hi Anne, could you introduce yourself please for those who don't know you? Hello, I'm Anne Danerol and I'm the church minister at what is currently Hull Community Church. Thanks. Can you tell us a bit about Hull Community Church and about Hull in general? Uh, well, Hull's a little bit at the end of the earth. Um, certainly it's the end of the line for everything on the East Coast. Quite a big city. And we've been, well, originally we were um, what you'd expect from a community church, quite evangelical. Um, but over the last 25 years, we've done a journey of um, inclusion and certainly a great deal of work in the community. Um, we ended up with a, a new building, which has been fantastic for that sort of work that we've been doing. And yeah, it's, but we've stayed independent in all that time, which has, has its advantages and of course its disadvantages as well. And so as an independent church, how did you get to know about Oasis? Well, Steve Chalk came um, to Hull in 2017. He was invited by the LGBT Christian Fellowship to come and give a talk and we were the only um, church that was willing to host and that was big enough because um, Hull isn't exactly um, on the map for inclusion if you like though there are many vicars um, in the city who who are um, quietly inclusive so it was fantastic to have Steve come 
And afterwards I'd spoken to him and we were just talking about the journey and how there were so many different things, not just around inclusion, um, but how starting to, I guess, reconstruct some of the things that I'd once thought um, in my sort of early years. And then met Steve again at one or two other conferences and just started to explore the idea of becoming an Oasis church. And I guess at that time, we were also in conversations with Hay Hill Baptist, who then ended up becoming Oasis Church Bath. Uh, and we've had a number of conversations, I guess, with a few different communities over that time. But this is the one that's um, excitingly really progressed really quickly. So can you tell us where we are on that journey at the moment? Yeah, so we, um, I think what sort of cemented it for us was at the beginning of lockdown in March last year, when the Oasis team uh, reached out to us and we ended up getting involved and, and being in contact with you much more than we had been up to that point. And I think it made us realise as well that when there's a crisis, how important it is to have that wider network and those relationships and so I think that was when we really made the decision we wanted to jump in. But of course, we had to wait because we really wanted to tell the church and talk to the church in person, not um, online. So we waited till sort of April, May, um, and then we've done a consultation and a conversation with our church. And it's been overwhelmingly supportive. Um, I had a young one woman say to me um, that, this meant so much to her about becoming an Oasis church because she said it was like the inclusion that we've brought into the church was not just a phase, but it was like we were embedding irreversible change into the organisation. And that's really stuck with me because, I, yeah, beyond all of us, myself, any of us that retire, we don't want the church to return um, to a place that isn't inclusive. So this is about saying, no, this is this is for the, the long haul um, so, yes, we're at the point as um, as this goes out on Sunday, we'll be having our AGM at the church and chatting to people and saying that we've definitely made the decision and to become an Oasis church. So it's now just the kind of due diligence stage and the, and the hard work of sorting out all the legal stuff um, to help this happen. Yeah, all the boring stuff is the stuff that's left, isn't it? That's the thing. Uh, yeah, I came up to, to Hull um, a couple of months ago and my... Uh, my thinking, it, it just felt like an Oasis church already. Uh, it felt like home. Uh, it felt like a, an inclusive community of, of people who came together and genuinely wanted to transform their, their local area in the way that Bath did when I went down there first and in the way that Waterloo always has done to me. So I'm really excited about Hell becoming part of the Oasis family. Um, what are you excited about? Um, I think I'm just excited about being part of something bigger. Um, do you know what? And I'll I'll say this: one of the sticking points for us was the name, um, because our name, Hull Community Church, is really well known in the city. And um, for a lot of us, it took us a, a long time to get our heads around the idea of changing the name. But actually, now I've gone the complete opposite way because I've discovered from more than one person that they it took them time to come to the church. Um, because we were called Hull Community Church and because people made assumptions that community churches are quite fundamental conservative churches, uh, apparently one of my funders that I rang, she said, whenever I go to the trustees about you, I always tell them that Hull Community Church is not one of those community churches. <laughs> so, so now I'm, I'm actually really positive about the name change, really excited because hopefully it will make people interested and and intrigued about what we're all about and perhaps it'll get over some of those barriers that might have stopped people coming before great i think anything that means that people will look at uh, the church in a in a more positive more inclusive light's got to be a good thing isn't it so yeah Definitely. oasis church waterloo oasis church bath and soon to be oasis church hull really exciting news um thanks for being with us Anne, and i'm sure that we'll speak again soon Yes, and anyone listening who's, you know, anywhere in the vicinity, please feel free to um, drop in on us any Sunday morning at 11. You will definitely be made to feel welcome. Thanks, Anne. Bye. Bye. I remember that first Friday night very well. 
perhaps almost five years ago now, when I travelled over to Hull after spending the day in Immingham at one of our secondary schools on the other side of the Humber Bridge. I remember first meeting Anne. We are so excited that Anne and Hull Community Church are now Oasis Church Hull and part of this steadily growing family. Welcome. Now, what Anne didn't tell you is on that night, Jill Rowe, our speaker this morning, came to Hull with me. In fact, Jill drove while I was doing a bit of last minute preparation around my talk for when I got there. But this morning, it's different because I'm just about to hand over to Jill, who, as I've already explained, works for Oasis as part of the national team who lead our work around the constant development of our ethos of inclusion and what we call the Oasis Nine Habits. This morning, she's going to be talking to us about one of those, the habit of patience. But first, we're going to listen to a passage read from the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. Julia Tricky, who's part of Oasis Church in Bath, is going to read for us. Proverbs 3, verse 13 to 24. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honour. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. By wisdom the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge the watery depths were divided and the clouds let drop the dew. My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion, for they will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you'll go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid, and when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Hi, my name's Jill Rowe and I'm the Ethos and Formation Director for Oasis and I'm also part of the leadership team at Oasis Church Waterloo. I wonder how good you are at waiting. Do you remember playing Pass the Parcel as a kid, which was basically a game of test my patience, that moment when the parcel is coming your way and you're absolutely convinced that the music is going to stop when it gets to you. And so you grab the parcel out of the hands of the kid next to you and lo and behold, the music doesn't stop. It goes on by and then it does stop at the kid on the other side of you. If only you'd be more patient. Who's your greatest irritant at the moment? Can you picture them? The truth is that our greatest irritant is our greatest teacher because that person is actually teaching us patience. So annoying, isn't it? And being patient is another one of our Oasis Nine Habits, uh, a part of this series of talks that we're doing at the moment. And just as a reminder, we talk about the habits as an invitation to a way of life characterised by being humble and hopeful and honest and considerate and compassionate and self-controlled and uh, forgiving and joyful and patient. And they emanate out of that teaching of St Paul that we come across in Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit. And they also are also wrapped up in uh, his description of love that we read about in 1 Corinthians. Paul describes love as patient. So there's something in here about the need for us to develop uh, the habit of being patient uh, to ensure that we are in and able to be in good, healthy relationships with others. Patience needs to be built into the very fabric of the way we relate to one another. A few years ago, I was in California and I was watching a friend of mine surf. 
And it struck me as I watched that there's a huge amount of waiting involved in surfing. I'd imagine that surfers try and ride every wave that comes, but they just don't do that. It's not the case. Waves come in sets. And so surfers will sit and wait for the right wave to come at a specific point in a set. And that wave will be a particular type of wave. It will be one that won't swallow them up or spit them out. It's the one that they'll be able to ride and express themselves. You see, there's wisdom in the waiting. So there I am on the beach watching and thinking to myself, well, this is a waste of time. Why don't they surf more? But those with wisdom, uh, which comes through being patient, they know. They know that being patient brings reward. And not only that, um, in the waiting, they're learning, they're noticing, they're seeing, they're experiencing. In fact, it's like they're able to mine life much more deeply um, uh, than the rest of us in that moment. They're curious and interested and seem much more present. Gaining wisdom being patient. These two things are inextricably linked. Let's pause just for a moment. I want you to close your eyes. I know that sounds weird, but it's okay. And with your eyes closed, I just want you to notice your breath. You may not have noticed it uh, before in this way. Maybe you've not even taken a breath. It feels like you haven't paused in a while. You might have said those exact words. So with your eyes closed, I want you to notice your breath and the way that the air fills your lungs. Allow your breath to slow down so that you take deeper, slower breaths. Picture your hand rising and falling as you breathe in and as you breathe out. As you breathe in and as you breathe out. As you breathe in and as you breathe out. And before we rush away from this, how did you feel? What did you notice as you were doing that karma? more present, more at peace, happier, more focused, clearer in your thoughts. We create lives and therefore also create a world that seems to be in a constant hurry. And at the same time as being the perpetrators of this, we're also the victims. We suffer at the hands of the world being done in a hurry. There are things to be done, places to be, jobs to do. There is a caveat in everything I'm saying, and that is the holy frustration that we should have at injustice. But it's also true that patience is needed in holy frustration. Think how long it can take for justice to come. And so we have to be patient. We have to persevere. Persevere is the fuel of challenging injustice. Think of Wilberforce, think of the suffragettes, Think of Martin Luther King, think of Black Lives Matter, um, th think of the gay rights movement, think of Greta Thunberg and uh, the environmental campaign. But let's not get stuck in the holy frustration point and miss the richness of the invitation of what greater patience can bring in our own personal lives as well. It's also worth saying that there are things <laughs> that it, we need to do fast. Like getting out of a burning building is a good example. But living like we're an emergency vehicle on a 999 call out the whole time is not good for us and not the way we're meant to live. The stress such a way of life causes is not sustainable. And even if we think we can manage it, an honest conversation with those closest to us would probably help us to see that the stress lands on them, even if it doesn't touch us. Impatience, it's addictive. The more we feed it, the stronger, more powerful it becomes. You must have noticed that in yourself. This means that our brains are experiencing patience like a sugar fix. And so we have to wean ourselves off of it. And this begins by having the courage to face up 
to our own reactions and responses and not run from them or blame others. In the tradition of the 12 steps, uh, this is the moment where individuals are invited to undertake a fearless moral inventory of themselves. That's like a deep, hard look at who we are and how we are. And then we need to practice noticing what happens to us physiologically and emotionally when impatience strikes. And then I would like to suggest trying an IAA, an intentional alternative action. This is designed to break the addiction and to begin to rewire our brains, an intentional alternative action. Let's just go back to that breathing exercise we just did. Noticing our breath is an intentional alternative action. It's a brilliant practical way to begin to build the habit of being patient. And there's something else about it as well. Yahweh was the name for God used by those we read about in the earliest texts of the Bible. The name is represented by the Hebrew uh, letters Yod, Hey, Va, Hey, Yod, Hey, Va, Hey. It's often referred to in Judaism as the unutterable name or the special name. Now think about your breathing again for a moment. What's interesting is that the very name of God is an echo of the way we breathe. Yod, hey, va, hey. Yod, hey, va, hey. God's very name, the sound of our breath. So a deep breath, a breathing exercise, a pause, these are intentional alternative actions and they are sacred and holy too. Imagine all those moments where our patience runs thin and the consequences of that. The damage it can do to our relationships, the damage it does to our health and well-being. But introduce an intentional alternative action and something else becomes possible. As we create these pauses, not only do we develop patience, but we also grow wisdom. At the beginning of the book of Proverbs, the writer describes how wisdom, which is described as female, obviously, roams the streets calling out. She is everywhere, but not everyone notices. People don't see her. They don't take time for her. And as a result, they miss out on all the benefits of wisdom. Out in the open, wisdom calls out. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? When we are impatient, when we live in a hurry, when we don't give time to others, when we're always thinking about what's next, when we get annoyed when someone's going slower than us, when we fail to live in the moment and learn from the moment, it's more than likely that we are not hearing the voice of wisdom because she is calling out everywhere. So learning to wait, learning to see the sets of waves come in, learning to know which wave to ride, learning to be willing to sit and watch and consider, learning to pause and breathe. Yod, hey, va, hey. Learning to practice an intentional alternative action so that wisdom does not escape us. And the result? We're less stressed. Our decision making is better. We feel better. We have greater clarity. And if not greater clarity, we have greater peace. Our understanding and empathy grows. We are present to people and life. Trellis is a word familiar to those of us who love to do a bit of gardening. And trellis is something that helps plants to grow well in a particular direction, to have structure and shape and to be able to flourish and thrive. And the word trellis comes from the same root meaning as the word discipline. To develop the habit 
of being patient is an act of discipline. It's a choice we make to grow in a particular direction, the direction of the way of Christ. And patience brings a growth of wisdom and with wisdom comes life. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding for she is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand, her riches and honour. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and she is calling out everywhere. So today and tomorrow, when we notice our patience is running thin, may we take a breath an intentional alternative action. And may we breathe and breathe again and notice the name of God in our very breath. Gaining wisdom and being patient. These two things are inextricably linked. Impatience is addictive. The more we feed it, the stronger and more powerful it becomes. Our greatest irritant is our greatest teacher because that situation or person is teaching us patience. To develop the habit of being patient is an act of discipline. It's a choice we make, a choice to walk the way of Christ. Let's pause and create the space to pray or to reflect as you choose on these truths, truths that Jill has so clearly set out for us. And to help us, let's listen again to some of the words of Proverbs chapter three. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is at her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honour. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life for those who take hold of her and those who hold her fast will be blessed. She is calling out everywhere. Amen. Well, that's almost it for this week. I'll leave you with this wonderful rendition of the song, Sing to the Lord, O My Soul. And we'll see you next week.
Ah, great.